How's it going everybody? Jesse here with Redefine FX and today I'll give you a quick introduction to GeoGen, a brand new tool by Jenga FX. So if you're familiar with EmberGen, the interface is almost the same. I am running GeoGen Alpha, so it's very likely that things might look different in the future. However, right now when you load up GeoGen Alpha, this is what you should be seeing. This is the default scene. If you're not seeing this, you can just click on File, New Project and you should get this. So you're looking at three main windows. You have the viewport where you can left click and hold to rotate around your scene. You can middle mouse button click and hold to pan around and you can right mouse button click to actually change the azimuth of the sun. So you can move the sun position around and change the lighting this way. So again, that's left mouse button, right mouse button and the middle mouse button to pan. Then you have your node graph over here. This is how you control what your terrain will actually look like by placing and connecting these nodes. And then down here you have your node details. This is where you control all of the individual settings for each node. But actually what we're gonna do is delete everything that's here because I wanna show you how to set this up from scratch. So we need some kind of a base to start with and it is actually called the base node. So I can just right click, hide source and create the base node. And I need to connect it to a rendering node for it to actually show up in my viewport. So I just click on the height map and drag out a pin, release, and now I can just click on renderer. So I have the height map of the base connected to the height map of the renderer node. And now I have something in my viewport. However, by default, the color of the terrain is pure white and we need to change that to clearly see what's going on. So I'll actually just drag from the color and roughness pin over here and create a new color colorize node. And this allows me to change the color of the terrain. So by default, this is set to single color, which right now is orange. I can change this to any color I would like. I can also change this to two colors, but you see nothing is changing. And that's because we need to tell GeoGen that we basically want the valleys and the peaks to be colored differently. And for that, we can use this gradient mask. So I'll just drag from the gradient mask, select a mask source, and we want the mask occlusion node. And we need to connect that to the height map. So it's a bit hard to see, but right now what's going on is that the valleys are colored with this dark gray color and the peaks are colored with the orange one. I'll just change the colors to make it obvious. And so now as I play around with this graph, you can see that if the graph is flat, it's completely red. And if the graph is flat on the other side, set to 100%, then it's completely green. And if I do a linear curve from 0% to 100%, what's going on right now is that the valleys are yellow and the peaks are red. So this is how you could create something like a snowy mountain where the snow is only on the peaks of the mountain, right? So I can change this also to a color gradient. Now maybe we can go for something like Arizona rocks. So I will go for more like an orange, like a dark orange color here and more like a brighter orange for the other color. So if you go back to our base node, what we can do is add a bit more detail to this just by dragging out of this warp pin and creating a domain warping warp noise. And you can see how that added a bunch of detail to my terrain. So you can lower the scale of the warp noise to add smaller and smaller scale detail into your mountain very easily like this. Now what we can also do in the base node is you have some shapes here, some preset shapes. So right now it's set to mountain rich. And you can see that as I drag down this curve, I'm lowering or heightening the height of my mountain in real time. So you can change that from mountain ridge to let's say cliff and you get something like that. You can change that to a crevice, an island, a mountain ridge, which we just looked at, or undulations. So I kind of like the crevice. I'll just go with that. And now what we can do is add some water to this. So we can go into the renderer node, water tab, and you can just click water active to enable the water. You can easily change the height of the water with just this water level. And we can change the color of it to make it a more sort of a dark blue, more like an ocean water. And now we can go back to the base and maybe change this to a mountain ridge. And we have a nice sort of shoreline 
um, with water. What you can also do under the render tab is you can change the lighting, move that around. You can go under fog and enable the fog, which will create some clouds for you. We can increase or decrease the scale of the clouds, decrease the fog coverage so there's not that many. Then you can go under atmosphere and enable that as well. So especially if you look into the horizon back there, you can see that it gives you some nice atmosphere effect. So you can increase the distance scale to get that atmosphere fog going on. You can also decrease or increase the opacity of the water to get a more sort of a crystal clear, transparent water. And where the true power of Geogen lies is your ability to connect all sorts of these different nodes together in an infinite amount of ways. So if you just drag from height map over here, you have your height modifiers. You have so many different modifiers here, terraces, craters. So just for fun, we can maybe create uh, a crater and you need to always connect it to the height map of the renderer in order for it to work, right? So now I have some nice craters inside of my terrain. I can lower their amount to maybe just one crater and then I can increase the radius of the crater, make it much bigger. You can even go beyond the maximum value here. So I can set this to, let's say, a thousand maximum and almost create like a lake. Also under the water, you can you can change the scale of the waves um, to give it a different sense of scale. So, you know, as I make these waves bigger, it looks like a small pond. And as I make the scale smaller and smaller, it's starting to look almost like a huge ocean. So it's always something to think about is the scale of your scene and what makes sense for you, right? So I just wanted to give you a brief introduction into Geogen. There's obviously so much to cover. You have so many different nodes and filters here. You can add rocks, all sorts of different erosion types, thermal, you can add sediment, you know, snow erosion, shore. Not to mention you have all of the different ways to mask things out. So you can have a crater combined with a fault and a beach and all that. So there's so much to cover in future tutorials. Just wanted to give you a brief introduction. So just to recap, you're almost always going to start with a base note which you need to connect to your renderer node. Then you have your colorized node with your mask occlusion, which we covered. And then you can add some filters and hide modifiers in between to create different looks. We also added the warp noise a node to add some additional detail, right? So I can, again, just easily add a ton more detail into my terrain over here. So as always, I hope that you guys found this helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more upcoming Geogen tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.